Good morning. Who or what does the Lord say will be called the Lord our righteousness? Our reading is at Jeremiah 33, and we're at verses 12 to 18 here. Thus says the Lord of hosts, In this place which is desolate, without man and without beast, and in all its cities, there shall be again a dwelling place of shepherds, causing their flocks to lie down. In the cities of the mountains, in the cities of the lowland, in the cities of the south, in the land of Benjamin, in the places around Jerusalem, and in the cities of Judah, the flocks shall again pass under the hands of him who counts them, says the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will perform that good thing which I have promised to the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. In those days and at that time I will cause to grow up to David a branch of righteousness. He shall execute judgment and righteousness in the earth. In those days Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will dwell safely. And this is the name by which she will be called the Lord our righteousness. For thus says the Lord, David shall never lack a man to sit on the throne of the house of Israel, nor shall the priests, the Levites, lack a man to offer burnt offerings before me to kindle grain offerings and to sacrifice continually. So this might have caught us off guard. The city of Jerusalem will be called the Lord our righteousness. But remember this, the city means the people, right? How do the people become righteous? They turn to God. God's the only one that can make us right and make us righteous. Only he. They become faithful to him. They receive his forgiveness. They receive his strength, his power. They become more hopeful. They begin to live according to the ways that God has revealed in his book. They begin to change. Their characters are changed. They begin to be different people because who you spend time with very largely, very largely determines who you become. And so these are people who are spending some time with the Lord of heaven through his word. They're people who are through his spirit are being changed from the inside out, and they are changing, and their character is becoming more and ever more like Jesus. See, the city is surrounded by the armies of Babylon at this part of our study of Jeremiah. With these unfaithful leaders, the people aren't going to get there. But God's removing those leaders and he is going to bring new leaders, and the people will be able to return to him and will be able to return to God. Oh, it's a beautiful thing that God is doing. He is not abandoning them. He is going to heal and help them. And ultimately, because they will be changed people, they will ultimately be called the Lord our righteousness. This is not only what God wants for the people in, of, that lived in Jeremiah's day, this is what God wants for you and me today. The world needs witnesses who will live this way. And God will make it so if we just allow him. Let us pray together for this thing. Dear Father in heaven, a simple prayer today. Lord, please just change my heart. Change my heart so that a likeness to Jesus can come there. That I'll still be me, but I'll be more like Jesus. That's your plan for each one of us, Lord, that We'll all still be who we are, but we'll become the better who we are. We'll all be more like Jesus as well as being who we are. You'll trim away the junky things, the bad pieces, the corrupt pieces off of our character and help us to become unselfish people. Lord, do so. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So there's our answer. Jerusalem will be called the Lord our righteousness because the people who dwell in her will indeed be righteous, righteous in the strength and power of Jesus. And we can be that way too, day by day as we grow in him. God be with you today as you serve him.